All right, I'm going to talk to you today about, about risk, okay? Not the game. Not the kind of risk like, you know, weaving through traffic and you got a cool little car and you're risking your life by acting real fun and cool driving fast, weaving in between cars. That's not the kind of risk I'm talking about either, Miles. Um, the risk I'm talking about is the risk of getting outside of ourselves and doing what God has called us to do, doing what he wants of us, or maybe doing something that brings us to a place of uncertainty. You know that word risk, or you may not know, but it means to step out into something with the possibility of loss or injury. Okay, so weaving through cars is risky. But also stepping out and getting outside of ourselves or outside of our comfort zone, if you will, like stepping outside of this place where we think that we can stay comfortable, which is really false anyways. I mean, you might think you could be comfortable or think that you can be safe, but really, no matter where we are, there's possibility for things to happen. There's possibility for us to get into a place of loss or injury, and really, whenever we close up, whenever we are trying to be safe, we're losing something anyways. We're usually losing connection with people, with uh, you know, our relationships, with maybe even our family. We're, we're losing what God has placed out before us that he wants us to walk into, and we're not doing that because we're scared or because we are trying to, to keep ourselves in this place of, of safety. And, and I know that we, you know, you're like, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a risk taker. I am too. And I've told you this before. I will, you, in, in the natural, in the, in the kind of like crazy jump off a cliff way, you know, if you say, hey, you won't do it, I will do it. I will take those risks. But you know where I've seen my, in my life that I haven't is in those places where I feel like it's more in an emotional, spiritual, those kind of ways. I will try to protect myself. I'll, I'll try to stay in this little bubble of safety. And I've had to step out. And even today and, and tomorrow, I know God will call me into different things that will cause me to step out even more in a, in a place that really, you know, for him, he doesn't risk. Because risk means there's a possibility of loss or injury, right? God can't do that. He knows what's going to happen. Every decision that he makes, he knows the outcome. To him, there is no risk. We feel like when we're following him, there's going to be some risk. And, and in a way, we might come into some things that we feel like, hey, that's loss. Hey, that's injury. But when we're following God, that is not the case. When we're stepping out in what he's called us to do or stepping out into something for him, or to speak of him, or to tell some, you know, in these ways, no matter what happens, I don't, I don't call that a loss. I call that a gain. Somebody may spit in my face, but it's not a loss because I've shared. I mean, I don't want that to happen, okay, guys? So don't spit in my face. Not that you would, but But are we willing to step outside of this place of what we think is safety? And to do something great. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. First, I'm going to go through this scripture. And there was just like so much. Hopefully I can get all this. But in 2 Samuel 10, starting in verse 1. You have the people of Israel, and they're kind of coming to this place of, of risk, this place of uncertainty. But the interesting thing is, is that it was something that came out of a nice gesture, a, a nice thing that, that David was doing. 
And it says, as it happened, after this, the king of the people of, uh, the people of Ammon died, and Hanan, his son, reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nashash. These words, these, these names. As his father showed kindness to me. So David is saying, listen. This young king's father showed kindness to me. He did something nice for me. He was nice. He's a nice guy. So I'm going to show kindness to him. I'm going to reach out and be kind and just do kind things, you know? And sometimes do we feel like sometimes we do that? And it's not reciprocated? And... and and then we go to the places where like, we're like, well, I'm not going to do that again. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay this first part out, but, but I want to hopefully share and, and encourage us that every time we step out in something that God has called us to do, in something that, I mean, who he's created us to be. That it doesn't matter what happens. It's always gain. It's always good. And if we can step outside of our comfort zones, God will bless it. So anyways, David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send some guys. They're going to comfort him. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to pat him on the back. They're going to, you know, sing him songs. I, I don't know. But they're going to comfort him. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon, and the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanan, their Lord. Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to search the city, to spy it out, and to overthrow it? So you have this moment where he's trying to do something kind and nice and send comfort to this Young guy that his father just died, and now he's got to take all this responsibility on. And, and, and he's saying, hey, I'm going to just be a blessing. And sometimes, even when we're being a blessing, you know, I'm not saying we're always doing the right thing and always nice. But sometimes when, when we do the right thing and we're, we're being nice and we're reaching out or, or we haven't done the wrong thing, it's still taken wrong. And why is that? I, you you want to know why? Because we all got mess. We all still dealing with the sinful nature stuff. We're all still trying to protect. And that's what I'm trying to get to us today is that I want to step outside of those walls and comfort zones and protections that we've maybe placed around ourselves that would cause us to be in this way where we react the wrong and, and attack. But they said, do you think that he's actually going to comfort you? You think he really cares about your dad? Do you think that he really, really wants to comfort you? Don't you think that he's going to spy on you and try to connive and, and do something? So even whenever we do the things the right way, it can still go sideways. Even we do godly things for somebody. Why? It's because most of the time that people are reacting based on something that has happened in their past or the fear of what will happen in the future. That's basically it. People react many times. If we don't get outside of this, if I'm, and I'm talking to us too, who we are, if we don't get outside of these kind of actions and reactions, we're constantly going to be acting on past stuff that doesn't really matter anymore. Because, right, we're in, in, in God's presence. We, he's done so many great things for us. He's, he's freed us from those past negative things or bad things. Or we're thinking about the future and what is going to happen. I need to be in this place of safety or protect myself, and we react a certain way. And this is what's happening. <laughs> he 
you know what the interesting thing? So, so people get offended. People get these crazy ideas about us. A lot of times, even it's because of people speaking in their ear saying, they don't really care about you. They, they don't really love you. They're actually probably trying to do something to hurt you. They're not. No. And in verse 4, it says, Then Hanan took David's servants, <laughs> shaved off half their beards, cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. So, so you have this moment where there's nothing actually been done wrong. There's no wrong action on the side of David or his men. But because of, of these twisted worldviews, the people he wanted to help, they come and they cut their beards and, you know, half of their beards. Because, I mean, it was a big deal. It's a big deal to me. If you shave half my beard, I'll be ashamed. Tori might be happy. I don't know. But she'll be like, shave the other side. We'll be good. And they cut their clothes so their butts showed. I don't care who you are. That's embarrassing. You're going to be ashamed. You're going to be embarrassed. And they do all this based on a twisted world view. It says in verse 6, when the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah. So it's interesting that it says in the scripture, when, it, when they saw that they had made themselves, they realized that it was them that did this. They made themselves repulsive in David's eyes. They even could see that it was their actions that brought on this like bad name for them in the eyes of David. But it didn't matter. Now we're in it. So they sent for reinforcements. Whenever we get into situations, you're like, how is it that somebody that's living in this place of, uh, of mess and, and feeling like something happened when it didn't happen and they find friends? How do they, how do they find friends? I, I just want to know. It's like these people find each other. It's like, they did me wrong. You wouldn't believe what they said about me. Oh, yeah? You want to hear what they said about me? Or you want to hear this? And it's really all this twisted stuff that didn't really even happen most of the time. Now, if you did something, you need to go repent. I'm not saying that we don't do anything wrong ever. I'm just saying. And so many times we come into these situations, and it isn't even because we did something, but it comes in this place, and now there's this army gathered around us. And it's not just one army, it's other armies gathered with them, and they're all together, and they're surrounding us. What do we do? What happens in that moment? I'm saying with us, what is our reaction? Because most of the time, what we want to do the first reaction that happens is we're like, boom, walls up, boom, I'm out, I'm running away. But what I want to talk about today is that God wants us to throw the walls down. And now in this story, they're going to fight these armies. They stand up to fight. But in what I'm talking about, I want to say you need to stand up to be who you are. To not allow this stuff that's going on around you or that's happened to you to cause you to back down and to not step outside of your little comfort zone. To maybe step out in that risk, right? To step out and say, there's a possibility 
that I may lose something. There's a possibility of injury to my spirit. There's a possibility of injury to my emotions. But I'm not going to lock myself away and lose God. I'm not going to lock myself away and lose re relationship. I'm not going to lock myself away and lose family. I'm going to step out. So we come to verse 12, and what happened was Joab gets his brother. He brings in, David sends the armies, and he says, I'll take this part of the army, you take that part, and we're going to fight. If, we, if I need help, you come help me. If you need help, I'll come help you. This doesn't happen if we close ourselves off to people. This doesn't happen if we don't have relationship with those around us. See, I want to be like Tyler, Dennis, Keith, Kim. I, 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 I want to be like, hey, Let's do this. Let's fight this thing. Let's fight this battle. Let's step outside of this place and go take the war to the enemy. Take it to the devil. Beat him back. And you know what? If I need help, you come help me. If you need help, I'm going to help you. I'm going to come to your defense if you need help. And hey, if I need help, please, <laughs> please come help me. But if we're Locking ourselves behind walls. This doesn't, this doesn't work out. And in verse 12, it says, Be of good courage, and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is right in his sight. So Joab, the commander of the armies, he says, Listen. Let's be strong for our people. It may look like the enemy's surrounding us. It may look like there's something scary on the other side of this hill. They're standing there waiting for us. But let's not go running away, being scared and, and, and closing ourselves off. Let's stand up and be strong for God. And by the way, May the Lord do what's good in his sight. What, is, what does he mean by, may the Lord do what is good in his sight? He means God is good. He means he will do. I think whenever he's saying this, he's like, listen, I know God will do what he wants. What he knows is good. And I am going to trust that he's going to do that. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it means for me as we, or us, as we step up, as we stand strong, no matter what happens, I'm going to step out and say, I'm going to step out in this risk a little bit. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. I'm going to step out because God is good. I'm going to step out. Because stepping out in this way and, and, and coming to a place where I'm a little bit vulnerable or I put myself out there is better than not being in the path of God, of what he wants for me. It's not as good as not following God and where he is. See, Joab made a strategic decision, not knowing how it would turn out. So many times we want to know how it would turn out, right? Listen, God, I will do this if you tell me the outcome. God says, hey, I want you to do this. And you're like, well, tell me how it's going to happen, what you're going to do, how you're going to defeat all my enemies, that I'm going to make it out. Perfectly fine. 
You know, many times we're not like, I just want to make it out alive. Many times we're like, I don't actually want anything to touch me. I don't want anything to happen to me. God, I'll, I'll do that thing if you actually let me do it when I'm looking my best. When, when I'm stepping through and, and I look like I just came out of a, you know, magazine, you know, a photo shoot. That's when I'll do it. But do we trust him and say, God is good? Like Joab and just say, may God do what's good in his sight. I will step out in this uncertainty. Step out of my comfort zone in this protection that maybe I've put around myself. Into what he's called me to. There's another little story. You guys know the story of Esther? So she's in this place where she's close to the king. She's close, but still there's so many different rules and regulations and things that happen. But she has her people, you know, the people of Israel that she's thinking about that she cares about, and, and she could maybe talk to the king, but the problem is, is that you've, if you go into the king and you haven't been requested or asked to come in, the king has said, every single person that comes that I haven't asked to come in, they are going to die. You kill them immediately, as soon as they come in. So she has this choice. Am I going to step out in this risk, in this uncertainty of loss or injury? Am I going to actually get outside of myself and and say, I'm I'm not going to think about what may happen. I'm just going to do what I know is right, what I know God has created me for. Am I going to step out in that? Or am I going to maybe just stay in this little bubble of protection? that I've put around myself. So Mordecai, who she's talking to, says, don't you think that God has created you for this moment? I love that. In this moment that seems a little uncertain or that she could step out and risk. And can we see those those things. Really, our, our reaction or our decisions are based, are based on who we think we are or who we think God is. And what I hope to share and and get across today is that all of these decisions that we should make should be based on who God is, should be based on knowing that God has created us for this moment. He says, don't you think that God has maybe just created you for this moment? Esther, he's put you in this place where you can talk to the king for your people so that you can help them. In Esther 4.15, it says, Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. Now, first of all, listen, again, gather together. you got to have people around you. I'm not saying step, look, One of my pet peeves are wild stallions, not the real ones, but the people that think they're wild stallions. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that think that they have it all together, that they have everything that they need, and they can do it on their own. And then they ask you to help them, you know? It's like, what? It's like, God's given me this great thing and this great calling and all this stuff and he's done you know told me this and that so you're gonna help me do that right um 
If he's called you, he's going to supply it. If he's called you, he's going to lead you in the right. You don't need me to set you up. You want me to set you up in the right place, or do you want God to do that? But she says, gather the people around, pray, fast, day and night. She's gathered those people around her to stand with her. Not by herself, but going with her the people of God, into that. That's, I see when we step out, we have to know that not only are the people and God, not, not only are just the people around us with us, but God is with us. We are not alone. And then she says, my maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. And if I, I love this. See, look, I'm just, this isn't just dudes that go out and risk and, and, and do great things. It's not just certain types of people that can do this. I'm saying this is everybody. This is all of us. God has called us to do great things, and we can all step into that. And now we have... Hear this story of Esther, and she's like, listen, just pray and fast, because I'm going to do this. And if I perish, I perish, but I am going to do what God has created me to do. She had to risk, or she had to run away, one or the other. And she decided to step out in that risk because it was with God and what God wanted her to do. Amen? Amen. Now listen, I'm not going to read the scripture, but you want to know a story about some people that didn't want to risk it? So when you have the people of Israel come out of Egypt and God's done all these great things for them and he's, he's done these signs and the wonders and the, the plagues and all this stuff, the pillars of smoke and fire, and you're like, listen, how could you not do what God has called you to do or ask you to do whenever you've seen all this stuff? And I'll tell you, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy because each time you have to step out and feel that uncertainty. Each time you have to step out and feel that risk in that moment. But God's done all this stuff for his people and brought them through the desert and they're standing there looking across the river. And God says, I want you to go into that place. I want you to send scouts, scout it out. Look what I got for you. And you know what happens? They come back. And all the men, but two of them, are like, hey, look, we're brought back a bunch of grapes. Two guys had to carry it. Two men. There's great stuff over there. The problem is, I don't know if it's the grapes or what it is, but the guys are big too. We feel like grasshoppers in their eyes. There's big dudes over there. And Joshua and Caleb, they're like, listen, it's fine. They might be big, but look at our God. How big is he? Look at all this stuff that he's done for us already. Why wouldn't he take care of us and help us to go into this land that he has actually asking us to go into? Why wouldn't he do that for us? But the people started complaining, and they started just grumbling and saying, man, it'd be better if we were back in Egypt. And I would, like, how many times are they going to say that while God is taking care of them? And you're like, yeah, how long, how, how, how many times do we say that? Whenever God is taking care of us and leading us and protecting us and supplying those things that we need, to make it through. And we're like, man, it would have been better if I wouldn't have just, if I wouldn't have done this. I should have just stayed back in that place of oppression because at least I knew what was going to happen. 
So God tells Moses, I look. It's like the people are grumbling and complaining. They're not willing to step out in this moment. Follow me and trust me. Step out in this risk, the possibility of loss. It might feel like a possibility of of loss or injury, but I'm with them, and so it's not going to be. If you trust me, it's not going to be really a risk. In me, it's not a risk. In you, it is. He says they're not willing to do that, so none of these people are actually going to see the promise that I have called them to. And all that I'm saying today, the the reason that I just want to stress this thing of like, you're like, oh, risk. And I say that too. It's like, oh, I don't step out in this uncertainty or this possibility of losing or something. But when I think about it this way, that God has things that he has promised us, right? He has promised us. Good. He's promised to protect us. He's promised to sustain us. He is our God. He is going to be there with us. And he wants good things for us. And he is going to lead us and guide us. All these different things that he is to us. And he says, I want you to step into the promised land and these things that I've called you to. The problem is, is there's some big dudes over there and you might have to take some time to fight them. But don't worry, I'm going to be with you. We're going to take care of those, those things that might be an issue. But you have to step out and do it. If we don't step out, then we do risk something. You know what we risk? We risk losing the promises of God. And that's what happened to this people. If we don't follow him, if we don't step out, into that uncertainty. We can lose the promise of what God has called us to. Would you stand with me? So today I just want to ask, are we going to we're going to risk. Are we going to be a people of, you know, I preached a, a message a long time ago, so who knows how good it was, but it's called moxie. Moxie is this, this inner confidence and excitement, and I don't know, remember the, the actual definition, but it's like this. You know, you, you, it's an old word, but moxie is like, Ooh, that guy's got moxie. He's walking around with his head held high. He's looking confident. And that's the way that we should walk. Isaiah 40, 29, it says, He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youths the youths it's like Walmart's it's what it says in the scripture so it's like when people say youths and youths and Walmart's just add an S to it it'll be fine even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen. These these earthly bodies can get tired and weary. Doesn't matter if you're of youths or an adult doesn't matter who you are. You can grow weary. We can get tired. But you know how we get past that? Is waiting on the Lord. You know this word wait. You're like, 
I, I look at the definitions of words because I want to really know what they mean, right? I, I, I like wait on the Lord. It's not like wait around. I'm just going to sit here and wait around until God actually moves me somewhere else. He's going to have to physically pick me up and put me somewhere else. That's not what this means. Sometimes that's what we do. You know what it means? To look for hope, to expect. So those that look for God to move, those that hope, and that word hope is an expectancy. It's expecting God to do something. Those who look for God to do something, those who expect God to do something. They, their strength shall be renewed. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. I love this. They, every time I say eagles, there's this guy that used to speak and say, eagle. And it's like, you'll soar like an eagle. But I think about this. And you know, when you get a little off in daydreams, you're like, man, it'd be awesome to just be flying like an eagle, to be able to see the creation of, you know, what God has created and to just fly above all these things. And God is telling us, he's saying, listen, whenever you step out with me, if you trust me, if you expect, have an expectancy for me to work and to do something. If you look to me for me to do something in the situation you're in, you're, you will grow stronger. You'll actually grow wings. Not really. It's not like Red Bull. Yeah, Grandma knows. But he's saying, listen, I will allow you to soar over these things that might be a problem. I will allow you to just float right over them and have these eagle eyes and look down and see all the things that I'm doing to help you get through this situation or this issue. You won't grow weary when you wait on the Lord. You won't grow faint. 